<laughs> feel the power. Oh, I can feel it. Now a moment of triumph approaches. <laughs> it's wrong talk. All what? right, we're back. Uh, we lost the speaker stream. If you're listening on the speaker stream, you don't know that unless you <laughs> figured it out on your own, which we'll give you credit for. Um, it's but us. Uh, the other stream is working, so you can still listen and watch with some minor interruptions on the Ustream give, feed. Give Timmy time to catch up now. Right, right. You with us, Timmy? <laughs> Terrible Timmy Horgan. All right, uh, we're going to move on to our next guest. <laughs> Who's now wishing? What? Who's like, uh, uh, back away so Jim Kofalt is the running for the New Hampshire House from what district? District 38, Hillsborough 38. Hillsborough 38, thank you for your service. Um, and also part of the 6 or 3 Alliance, as are myself and Mr. Murphy here. Yep. And uh, there's a big event coming up for persons such as yourself. Or That's right. Um, in, on August 10th, the 6 or 3 Alliance is going to be holding a, um, a an issues briefing for state rep candidates. And this came about because, you know, I think there are a lot of people who are recruited to run for a state rep. We have a true citizen legislature, but a lot of those folks may not have the same depth of knowledge that somebody who's been in the state legislature may have, or somebody who's been, you know, who reads Granite Rock on a regular basis. So the idea well is, nice uh, well, done. <laughs> uh, well it, and it's true because there are a lot of, uh, I'll give some examples. We're, we're, what we're going to do is have uh, some subject matter experts coming in to talk about a range of different issues. He's talking about guns. J.R. Hole will be uh, talking <laughs> about guns. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. And uh, so we want to have, we're, we're going to have 10 different slots. It's going to be kind of a rapid fire, 15 minutes each. And what we want people to talk about is what's happened, what bills were discussed, debated, proposed during the last legislative session, what bills are likely to be proposed during the next legislative session, are there relevant court decisions or news items that pertain to some of these issues, so that when a voter who maybe isn't a strong Second Amendment person, they know that they support the Second Amendment, but they don't necessarily know the nuances of it. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks them about this whole suitable person debate, they may not have any idea of what that's about. We want them to be educated about it. We want, uh, I, I would say this is an opportunity for us to educate some of those state reps, give them the tools that they need to succeed, um, and when they get to the legislature, to have a little bit uh, advanced preparation for dealing with some of these topics. And actually, we have somebody who's coming to talk about the budget process, too. That, right. Actually, that's really a huge one, because the budget's confusing, and while 15 minutes isn't a ton of time... <laughs> It's really not. I mean, we, we understand this is sort of the fire hose treatment. This is, you know, lots and lots of information in a three-hour session. Yeah. Um, but Charlie Arlinghouse is gonna, from the Josiah Bar Bartlett Center is going to be talking about the budget. Okay. And in that particular case, because it is such a big topic, um, we are considering having a, a, a follow-up webinar in which we would treat that particular topic in more detail. Mm -hmm. But some other topics that we have are Medicaid, Medicare, uh, expanded um, Medicaid expansion, uh, health care, Medicaid, um, education, including things like Common Core, school choice. Um, talk about, again, some of, the, some of the issues that have come up in New Hampshire over the past couple of years. Greg Moore from Americans for Prosperity is going to be there to talk about economic freedom, so he'll touch on issues like right to work and, uh, and minimum wage and, and things like that. So, um, so it's not campaign school. It's different. It is not. It's more like campaign. issues school. Right. Um, I, a couple of months ago, I was talking to some people about running for state rep, and um, I, I spoke to somebody who was interested in running um, and ultimately is running, and, but I didn't know her, and so I asked her the question, you know, what, what do you feel about Medicaid expansion? What's your position on that? And her answer was, well, you know, I think I'd have to do some more research. Um, to me, on a lot of topics, that's not a terrible answer, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll say to her credit, this was well before the, the candidacy period, and she's done a lot of homework. But... It, it sort of was a, a red flag that said, okay, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are running to be part of this citizen legislature um, who need to hear about what Medicaid expansion is, how it's part of Obamacare, um, how it's gone way over its mm -hmm. est quote unquote estimated. <laughs> yes. I read Granite Rock too. Um, over its estimated uh, costs. Uh, costs. And, 
you know, why ultimately, you know, it's a it's a Trojan horse for broad based taxes and you know vastly Single payer increased and da, 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 da. Yep. vastly increased government state spending. income tax. Mm-hmm. Thank right. you, Jill. A chance. Yep. <laughs> so, so, so you guys have this on a, a is that a weeknight? It's going to be on Wednesday, August tenth, um, in Concord. Uh, from well, the the presentations are from six to nine, and then we'll have a Q and A if people want to stick around for a, a, another hour of Q and A. We'll do that. Um, we've already sent out invitations to the state reps that we have email addresses for. So. Uh, in the first two days, we got about 20 registrations, so we're pretty happy with the response so far. We expect probably 30 to 50 people in the end. Um, and again, we just think that this is a really good opportunity to uh, to to sort of get to these folks and, and help them understand the issues at a level of detail that will help them answer questions, uh, deal with voter objections, and uh, when they get to the state house, to, uh, to understand the issues in a way that... Uh, that will help them vote the right way. Good for you. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So, yeah, it's a good, it was a great idea. Um, it's come together, as do many of the things we do, with the exception of the caucus, pretty quickly. <laughs> the caucus, caucus was fun, though. I was there. The caucus was a huge project. And it was months and months in the making. It was. And it was this a is lot like of fun. weeks in the making. So I never saw a, a caucus different. before, so to me it was extremely interesting because I had never saw one, and I'd never want to see one again, but it, it was... <laughs> Well, I think it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of fun, but it, it's, how the whole thing works is in other states is it's a just to get crazy. the idea how it, it, yeah. yeah that was that was a very very big project yeah. and one of the things that happened is I think a lot of people heard about the 603 alliance and they heard about the caucus and then when the caucus was over they kind of said okay well I guess that's over <laughs> and uh, you know we the 603 alliance when we got together we said when we when we founded the group. Uh, a bunch of us got together and we said, you know, this is something that we want to be doing long term. Mm-hmm. So uh, at each step in the in the in this in the cycle here, we were sort of asking, what can we do next? So uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, we interviewed all of the candidates for governor, CD1, CD2 and U.S. Senate and made some endorsements and recommendations on those in terms of their position on constitutional issues. And the neat uh, thing about that was that we invited a bunch of people, activists, yourself included. I mean, we invited a lot of people, to, if they could come, to be part of that process to help vote to decide what the grassroots thought about what these candidates had to say. And uh, so it wasn't just a 603 Alliance. In fact, there was more other people there than there were members of the steering committee, really. Right. So Did you videotape it? I think we took pictures. Uh, we? There were some pictures. We did not record it. Um, you know, I, th- I think we really wanted people to to be free to to Disavow. speak their minds, and uh, you know, I I think the, um, the one of the things that I you know to Dark. your to your point, Steve, I think one of the things that we were aiming for there, and that we're aiming for with this issues briefing, is to kind of bring people in from from different activist groups throughout New Hampshire. So, in the in the case of the um, of the candidate interviews that we did. Uh, we did invite a number of people in, and the endorsements and the recommendations were based on input from all of those people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, and there was there was pretty strong consensus on that. There were no super delegates. We didn't um, have any weighted <laughs> outcomes. Everybody's vote counted the same. <laughs> right. And what was interesting is that two days later was the CNHT picnic. Two days after we put out our endorsements was the CNHT picnic, yep. and the straw poll results from the CNHT picnic lined up very very closely with with what we had. Um, come out with from the 603 Alliance. So um, we felt like that was a validation of uh, of the input that we had gotten from from the various activists who were at that those interviews. So the 603 Alliance is, you know, we're, we're definitely, we're here to stay. We want to be working on uh, restoring constitutional government at all levels of government. And uh, that includes everything from state rep all the way up to president of the United States and everything in between. So, um, so this is sort of our our third project, and uh, look for more uh, look for more going forward as uh, as we close this out and get closer to election day. Yeah, once this whole presidential nonsense is over, we can you know focus on state issues and, and things like that. I'm um, still waiting for the sweet meteor of death. Yes, I know you want Smod, <laughs> but uh, I don't think Smod's going to be here in time. So we're going to have to do something else in the meantime just to kind of fill in, you know. Well, the, the nice thing is once the election's over, right, then you have two years that you can focus on other things. 
and before you have to be tortured again with another election. Well, you, you collect rocks to throw at candidates. That's really <laughs> <laughs> plenty <laughs> of granite in the granite state. Plenty of granite state. You can't dig anywhere without finding some. So your district. Uh, let's talk about your district. People vote in your yep. district. Um, My district is uh, Hillsborough 38, and the towns are Antrim, Bennington, Francistown, Greenville, Greenfield, Ten towns. Hancock, Hillsborough, Lineborough, Wilton, and Windsor. My goodness. Uh, which is a mouthful. <coughs> um, it is a floaterial district. It's a two-seat floaterial. And I think probably most of your dis- most of your listeners know what a floaterial is, but essentially, uh, if I say I live in Wilton, Wilton gets two and two-thirds representatives. We get two representatives as part of a four-town district, which is District 4. And then the Floaterial is a larger district, which we share with a bunch of other towns. And that gives us two. We are a third of, mm-hmm. of that larger district, uh, which has two more. So basically, uh, I'm running for that larger Floaterial. Um, it's a tough district, but... Uh, a conservative can win it. Frank Edelblue proved, proved that last time yep. around. Um, and uh, I'm running alongside uh, the, the other Republican running on on, uh, on the ticket for 38 is J.J. Valera. Yes. Uh, a yeah. really good guy from Windsor. Um, and so J.J. and I are going to be working together to uh, to get out there and try to reach as many voters between now doesn't, and uh, Election Day as we can. J.J. goes back to the uh, Windsor Friends and Family Program, doesn't he? He Wasn't does. He a whistleblower? He, yeah. he was a whistleblower and an activist that uh, Ed Nail, I think, worked very closely with, and, and others at CNHT worked this very was, closely with. This was the story that was breaking when I started with NHTR, yeah. New Hampshire Taxpayer Radio. And it was a big story because, if you're not familiar, basically the people who run the town were we're not charging property taxes to their friends and family members in town. And this had been going on for years and years and years. Yeah. And the DRA had never audited them. It went all the way up to the state capitol. Wow. Nobody was checking into anything. So a couple of people in town started blowing the whistle. And they started getting harassed. Somebody's shed got burned down. They were It was nasty because Windsor's a small town. Right. Um, and eventually they finally got the, I don't know if it's a DRA or the AG's officer, somebody showed up at the town to pick up all these records. And, of course, they had lost records. They had destroyed records. They had deleted missing the records. Emails. They had, had deleted the emails. And, um, and, and J.J. was there the whole time. I mean, you, you live in a small town, and you start poking that bear. Holy crap, is it ugly. Yep. It is ugly. So you got to, I mean, this is a guy. They actually threatened him? Uh, they'll threaten him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, they had their sweet deal. They weren't paying property taxes for yeah. a decade. Wow. On, yeah. like, lakefront property or whatever. I mean, this is this is a lot of money we're talking about. Right. Wow. Um, so did anybody go to jail? Is that Was that the end In the result? end, I don't think anybody went to jail. I don't think not. so. Of course not. No. I mean, I think they're actually collecting the taxes now. That was really pretty much it. But, I mean, the DRA wasn't even look. It's just awful. Yeah, if I if I remember correctly, and I think uh, I think Ed Nail could, could probably verify this, I think the DRA was notified, but just took no action for a while Mm -hmm. and um yeah it was eventually uh eventually one day this the state police rolled up to town hall and and seized the records and that made the front page of the union leader but uh it took a long time to get there and it was people like jj and ed nail who were on the front lines of that fight wow yeah so i mean this is one of those stories where i learned at the beginning of my activism about how much corruption there is at the town level. We talked about embezzlement stories and all these other things that come up. So, I mean, in a lot of those towns like that, there's always going to be situations like that where you, I mean, and I mean, you're at the state house level if you're a state rep, so it's not quite the same, but there's a little oversight anyway. I mean, there's legislative options available for holding people accountable and some of them are already in place. And, you know, but again, if the DRA isn't going to do anything, right. It's just going to go, and on NHMA, and on and on. our good friends at the New Hampshire Municipal Association, <laughs> teach all of that budgeting stuff, and they teach you how to keep records. And they work very closely with DRA on equalized values <laughs> and plot plans and stealing. They hate clerks. They hate town clerks, however. Whether you like your clerk or not, the New Hampshire Municipal Association hates clerks. I like my town clerks. Because the clerks are independent. They're generally elected, not all of them. Um, and whether you like him or not, Mr. Gardner takes good care of the clerks because they manage the elections. Mm-hmm. Well, the municipal association thinks that, that like, 
most town employees, you know, they ought to be appointed. So clerks are always your best friend. They, not always. Generally, clerks are your best friends. I'm glad friends. mine likes me. And yeah, the HMA <laughs> teaches the others how to steal. Yeah, so my, you town, wanna, my town administrator tried to get our selectmen to make our town clerk no longer elected, but appointed. Oh, they and did they that in And they tried playing Warner. all kinds of games with her salary. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, a bunch of us st- stuck up for her because she, she and her crew <coughs> generally do a good job. But, yeah, the games that they play. Oh, same in our town. They, I mean, they we, went after our clerk. And uh, um, got a woman to run who was wholly unqualified. <laughs> and, of course, she lost. But then she gets uh, hired by the town part-time uh, in the accounting department. And then we get a town administrator, which we don't need. And the town administrator <laughs> makes her the director of finance. Oh. So this new director of finance likes to audit our town clerk and say, uh, uh, where's that dollar gone? Wow. <laughs> so, Jim, it's what you been, I assume you've been talking to voters. I have. And, and, and uh, uh, what are they saying? What are they interested in? What do they want? I, I think. Is it McNamara who's. You guys are running yeah, Mac- McNamara? McNamara is, is one of our opponents. And Marjorie Porter. No. No. Um, who's the other one? The other oh, Gilman, uh, Gilmanton Shattuck or no, whatever. No, no. Or is he it's, dead? It's, a, uh, <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, the, the name is escaping me right now, but it's a That's young right. lady who's running for the first oh, time. Oh, she has one of those three name things. That's she right. Has, she is a Bernie Sanders supporter. Yeah. Um, a very exuberant young Bernie Sanders supporter. Um, and I think uh, what what a lot of the Bernie Sanders supporters, I think, see is the same thing that a lot of the Donald Trump supporters see. They just have completely different approaches to solutions. Um, you know, it's that the system is rigged and government, um, well, in the case of conservatives, it's government's too big, government is not the solution to the problem. Government is the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with uh, with the Bernie Sanders supporters, there's a lot of uh, a very strong sense that the, the system is rigged as well, um, as uh, as we saw even more strongly this past week with the DNC uh, email hack. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think people I are... I like taco balls. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have it for dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, I think people are people people are are seeing that government is the problem, of course it and that is. we Someone's need ringing. to and that we need to shrink government. Well, I, I can't it. see it. I, I I can't pick it up. I'm sorry. I have to call a guest shortly. I don't even know what line it is. It's line one. Line wow. one. Line one. Hold on a second. Let's just wing this and see what happens. Hello. 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 You're on the air. Hello. You're off the air. Okay. Wrong number. <laughs> Excuse me. What do you mean I'm on the air? Um, I'm sorry. You got about a minute and a half. So, <laughs> so for me, the big issues are Second Amendment, uh, school choice, personal freedoms, and fiscal responsibility. So, I'd like to see, you know, constitutional carry passed. I'd like to see us get rid of some of these. Um, little infringements around the corner and put a big wall against the infringements that uh, some of the things you've talked about earlier on the show uh, around sort of the creeping mental health uh, a gun grab attempt, things like that. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to see school choice. Uh, parents should be in charge of their education, not local teachers' unions. Um, and personal freedoms and... and Fiscal responsibility. We need to roll back Medicaid expansion. Can I add one more thing, just yep. as a personal favor? Let the legislature do all of the rulemaking and not hand off that responsibility to the executive branch. Because what the AG did was exactly a prime example of that, and we've seen that so often that you know the JL car or whatever the name of it is. Get rid of it. If the legislature is going to legislate, do it. Right down to the actually, li- li- littlest detail instead of heaving repeal, it over the wall. Actually, the legislature a. did give the AG permission to do what he did. Yes, they did. That's the problem. Well, the, the legislature gave no, him permission. But that's the problem. They mm, shouldn't have. Oh, well, of course they shouldn't have. But I'm saying it was voted on to give him permission to do it. It was. Yeah, I know. I know. So I agree but, that the, legis- the, the, the administrative state is kind of the, the favorite tool of the left. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... 
lawmaking power um, is in the hands of the legislature and should be in the hands of the Thank legislature. You. you know All what right. they use? They use guidances. The, from federal government even to the state government, they use guidances. Right. And if you don't follow them, you get I have to call my next okay. guest. Okay. Thank Go. you, sir. Very Thank much you. for coming Appreciate in. Appreciate the and, opportunity uh, to be on. Talk, And we'll be back in a few minutes with Dr. William Briggs. Rock.